tomorrow's bets. I'm Nivrita Ganguly and this is your one stop for complete picture of the trading day as well as important cues that we are tracking for tomorrow. A fifth consecutive day of cuts coming in for the, the market. In fact, the sell-off is simply continuing. Let me bring in Piyush Jain then to wrap it all up for us. Weakness continuing across the street. Piyush, take us through today's market action. Well, uh, there were a couple of uh, important points again, uh, which we should be again really paying att uh, close attention, I should say. Number one, Nifty has comfortably breached and closed below again 200 EMA mark here. So, you are talking about a close below a key support level of 11,310, which we are talking about since last two days. So, again, that is number one again actually is bearish uh, for the market here. Second is we are one day again uh, to expiry, so which implies Call writers do not have any incentive to cover their positions because of time value of money. The premiums are anyways actually are reducing rapidly. So that is also going to put additional pressure tomorrow also because uh, I like there is no unwinding. Then again you don't actually see any uh, sort of a reason for sharp short covering rally here. On the nifty side in the context of performance today, uh, all sectors they closed in red barring media index again which was finally because of Z entertainment out performance here. But uh, taking a look at all the indices, Nifty closed half a percent down, mid cap index closed one and a half percent down, small cap index closed 1.2 uh, percent down, so very weak market bread. Bank Nifty index uh, closed almost 175 points down and we are almost 100 to 120 points away from very important 200 EMA level here and that is a very crucial support for the Bank Nifty. On the bread side, only two banks again they close in green, HFC Bank and Kotak Bank for the Bank Nifty bread side, so again very weak market bread for that part of the market also. Broadly from the large cap side, strong results, population paints almost 4 percent higher, again from the lows it was almost 6 percent move here, but again cl close was almost 4 percent up. HFC again registered a good rebound, HFC Life again had a good sort of reaction to the results and HFC also again up, uh, did the same 2 percent up. Z Entertainment 5 percent up, HWL again after the sort of results again. Today again we saw a bout of buying here. The buying was also seen in couple of other paint stocks, Berger Paints, again Kanza and Narulak after good Asian paint results. That was one sector which was outperforming. We were seeing heavy short positions in steel stocks, also again shorts were being seen in uh, metals, pure metals like Vedanta and Dalco. Shorts were also being seen in oil marketing companies, rupee was depreciating and that was creating its own short positions there. Then uh, you actually saw some good strong recovery in LNT Infotech and LNT Technologies. LNT Infotech again closed about 5 percent up here. Apart from that, uh, there was also again a sort of uh, a very heavy uh, sort of uh, selling activity seen in couple of building material stocks, whether it is Ambuja, Kajaria Ceramics, 8 percent down after cut in the revenue guidance, MM Finance, very weak results, 10 to 11 percent down. So, these are a couple of examples, but uh, as again we are talking about uh, the broader market breadth was very negative week here. So, we again should go to the expiry day with, uh, with, a, with a good sort of notion that market still again basically is in the grip of beers right now until the time again we actually do not see a sharp short covering rally. Tomorrow expiry again is going to be tough for the bulls here. It's going to be tough for the bulls and of course remember we are going into expiry day tomorrow so volatility will be uh, the factor to watch in the current market. In fact on that note let me welcome in our guest joining us on the show Forum Parikh, uh, Fundamental Analyst at India Bulls Ventures. Welcome to the show Forum, good to have you on. It's a very very tough time for the market. Uh, you know it's been a steady sell off pretty much since the budget announcement. In fact the last five days the cuts have been deepening as far as uh, you know the market action is concerned. Uh, what is the sense that you have at this point? What are the triggers that the market will be watching for next and what is the overall market direction that you are factoring in? Uh, the overall market direction is very negative from all the pockets if we see there is just no relief I mean we are looking at the earnings though earnings are coming on a good numbers but the management commentary has been on a very cautionary note which is a reason uh, for one of the reasons for selling in the markets and uh, secondly there is just no stopping to FII sellings as well we have seen like almost uh, more than 10,000 crores have been uh, you know uh, sold out by FIIs in a span of mere 15 days which is enormous and uh, which is a reason to worry of course and I do not see this kind of uh, selling being stopped anywhere in the near term. So market breadth overall looks very negative and in this kind of market scenario if we see um, there is just no respite for the auto sector. Uh, 
we are seeing like PSU banks, we were just seeing little bit of a bounce back, but then again PSU banks, uh, you know, selling is eminent and uh, I think the overall breadth is very uh, negative. So it remains a purely stock specific market and uh, only stocks which have a uh, good earnings supported by good uh, management, uh, positive commentary, only those stocks should be bought at current market price and uh, there should be absolutely no hurry to buy any stocks in this correction. I think market will give us some more time and many attractive levels to enter. Alright, very clear advice, don't be tempted with the kind of cuts that we are seeing at this point in time, be very very cautious, things are looking quite dire indeed as far as the street is concerned, uh, so be careful is the advice coming in from forum, in fact let's break down the, the kind of action that we saw today, starting with the metals, you know, steel clearly leading the fall, metals were the chief contributors to the correction that we saw in today's day of trade, look at a name like JSPL for example, one of the top losers in the entire broader market universe, we closed finally with a cut in excess of 7.5%, nearly 8% and cuts on Jindal Steel and Power. JSW Steel also came under pressure. Steel Authority of India lost out. Both these counters losing around 5% or more in today's trading uh, session. Vedanta, Tata Steel, across the board, you know, wherever you look, a fair bit of pain playing out as far as the entire metal space is concerned. So the, the Nifty Metals Index also closing out uh, with a fair bit of uh, uh, negative uh, uh, sentiment. But Forum, what would you be doing with metals at this point? Because, you know, I, I take your point that this isn't perhaps the right time to be buying but should investors be factoring in a further slide as far as metal stocks go I think we will witness some more correction even in the metal space because overall if we see the entire metal space is highly leveraged counter and uh, we do not expect good set of earnings coming in. Moreover, we had a lot of you know uh, uh, global news uh, impacting the metal counter and that overhang is always there. So I feel that uh, one should definitely stay away from the metal counter because when our own broader indices are, uh, is witnessing such massive sell off. So uh, a sector which is highly leveraged and uh, you know uh, realizations take time to uh, pick in so I think uh, we have better attractive uh, you know stocks uh, the fact that market is corrected significantly there are good earning stocks available at attractive valuations we should shift to those kind of stocks rather than uh, you know uh, going into the entire metal pack so I think uh, the fact that there is no such uh, concrete news uh, in the sector this Despite that the entire sector is seeing a sell-off, I think the counter is extremely weak and one should definitely not enter into the metal space at current uh, juncture. All right, so that's as far as metals are concerned. Uh, you also mentioned autos uh, forum. In fact, let's talk about the way autos traded today, clearly running out of fuel as far as the entire auto sector is concerned. Aisha Motors closing one of the top nifty losers of the day. In fact, a three-year low is where that counter is trading. And along with that, the likes of Mahindra and Mahindra also coming under severe amount of pressure. Uh, we have been seeing, of course, Ashok Leyland, TVS Motors also losing out quite significantly. Uh, reports indicating that dealers of Aisha Motors have seen huge defaults recently as well and the index itself closed with a cut of over a half a percent as well. Maruti continuing to slip and this after its cancelled plans to hike the output from the Gujarat plan and m, &M like I mentioned sustained selling pressure continuing on that one. Three year low is what we saw coming in as far as uh, the, uh, the, the, the m, &M stock is concerned. In fact as the slowdown is continuing uh, ACMA president uh, Ram Venkatramani has warned that it may lead to job losses as well. The sector is facing 15% reduction in demand which threatens to trickle down to jobs in the auto component companies. BTVI's Mekta Mittal spoke to the, uh, him to find out exactly what uh, you know this might entail as far as job losses are concerned. Listen into those comments. So obviously we ride on the backs of our vehicle makers and when they make a production cut it impacts us to the extent that we too have to follow suit and make that production cut. So as I had mentioned earlier, I think all of us have started uh, uh, cutting down on our manpower, cutting down on our number of working days so that we keep in pace with the demand and that obviously is impacting our profitability and asset utilization. So what is the kind of slow on uh, the slowdown in the demand that the automotive sector is facing and what is the kind of uh, job cuts that you mentioned uh, that the automotive component sector could be facing? 
So, as I said, the demand slowed down. I think this is the tenth consecutive month, and the quarter one specifically has had cuts from high single digits to about fifteen percent. Right uh, now, the GST Council meeting is on twenty fifth. Uh, you have been raising the issue of high GST on the auto components. Is there any um, set of demands that you have again raised in the forthcoming meeting? Uh, the same ones, ma'am. I think we are all uh, requesting for a reduction uh, of or uh, make a uniform GST rate of 18% for all our components, so that that stimulates demand specifically in the aftermarket. And I think our customers are also requesting a reduction in duties, uh, so that it boosts uh, vehicle sales as well. All right. Well, that's a view coming in from ACMA. So clearly, a fair amount of concern that's playing out at the moment of forum. Uh, you know, when you see stocks like Maruti, M and M, three-year low coming in on that one. Similar story for Aisha Motors. From the, at the dealer level, things are looking extremely tough. Uh, what would be the advice to investors? Do you hold on? Do you book out at this point? I think it is too late to book out of the auto sector because uh, people who have uh, auto stocks can continue to hold. But of course, uh, the, uh, I would not advise any sort of fresh buying into the sector because, of course, as we have seen during the budget, lot of any uh, you know uh, initiatives have been taken towards promoting electric vehicle uh, uh, electric vehicles, and that is why all the companies uh, would have to undergo production cuts in their traditional uh, you know business. So I feel that uh, this kind of selling would be uh, there in the market. There is going to be definitely weaker demand because we were expecting some sort of consumer uh, push, uh, you know, from the government in the budget, which was uh, definitely not uh, seen in our union budget. And as a result, demand will still take time to come back to normalcy. But uh, having said that, uh, people who have uh, auto stocks, I think it is very late to, uh, you know, book profit so uh, probably uh, if you get little more attra uh, at an attractive levels you all can uh, you know uh, enter again because uh, this is like a structural uh, you know uh, shift from its traditional business to electric vehicle business and once uh, the dust gets cleared you know settle down we will definitely see uh, you know uh, buying back on the cards for auto sector but uh, having said this uh, no fresh buying at current levels is what uh, I would advise. All right, don't be tempted to buy into the kind of cut that we are seeing in the auto space. Uh, wait for this to play out and some meaningful signs of recovery to set in before you start looking favorably at the entire auto space. But of course, if you haven't booked out yet, then hold on perhaps is the view coming in from Forum. Uh, now, we did have a bit of good news coming in and this in the form of Asian Paints' uh, first quarter numbers that came in. They also faced a bit of pressure coming in from the slowdown in the auto space. So, the industrial segment definitely took a hit this time around. But the decorative side more than making up for the kind of uh, uh, you know cuts that we saw coming in in the industrial segment. Overall, we saw 17.7 percent up move coming in on the bottom line, and the top line also grew by about 16 percent on a year-on-year -year basis. Um, the margins are expanded, and that's definitely a bit of good news, even at a time when we're seeing this kind of pressure in various segments of the economy. 22.5 percent is where we saw the EBITDA margin come in for Asian paints. The paint segment revenue came in higher by about 16.6 percent, and the India decoratives volumes. Uh, grew in high double digits. So that's also another bit of good news coming in. And the stock, uh, you know, clearly seeing a very smart up move today for him. What did you make of the numbers? You know, Street giving a big thumbs up to Asian Paints results, nearly 4% higher is where we closed out on the stock. And I think it was a bit of much needed good news at a time when we're seeing, you know, these signs of slowdown in a vast number of sectors that Asian Paints actually caters to. How should we read the numbers? I think the numbers have come very nice and it's come nice on every parameter uh, and during a time when consumption has taken a hit. So if we look at the revenue growth, the PAT growth, uh, you know last quarter also I think uh, it had done, uh, Asian Paint had reported good set of numbers and on a higher base you know it is reporting good set of numbers. Also its two plans have com uh, you know commissioned in this quarter and that is why we are seeing uh, an you know uptick in the top line. And I feel that uh, you know this kind of volume growth will continue even in the next quarter because uh, of course consumption is uh, has taken a slowdown. But if we listen to the union budget, uh, there is a clear focus of you know uh, having more houses and. Uh, 
and clearly government's vision of housing for all for by 2022 so i think that this kind of vision will definitely augur very good for all the paint industry building product industry and in that scenario when asian paint has reported such good set of numbers aided by two uh, plant commission so i feel that these kind of numbers will definitely stay uh, you know on the cards for more uh, one two quarters and at a time when other uh, you know uh, companies management is having a cautionary view i feel that uh, there wouldn't be any sort of cautionary view coming out from asian paints management and that would again aid to the you know sentiments or uh, positive sentiments for the stock so i feel that uh, asian paint should definitely be bought at current market price All right, so that's as far as Asian Paints is concerned. Now, one stock that was in focus today, and also for good reasons, is Interglobe Aviation. A stellar up mover coming in for this stock, and this after sources telling Business Television India that perhaps a truce could be on the cards. Uh, the chairman of the board, we're learning, has uh, stepped in and is trying to, uh, you know. Uh, go really resolve the kind of issues that uh, uh, have come to light between both the co-promoters of the company that's the chairman m damodaran trying to essentially sort out the differences between uh, rakesh gangwal as well as rahul bhatia and that of course will go a long way in seeing a bit of a recovery coming in for the stock that has been heavily beaten down for him we've seen a cut of about 17% for indigo ever since interglo aviation ever since these uh, you know this dispute came to light from there we recovered about 10 11% today we've seen a very smart up move the numbers that came out were very very strong you know they continue to be market leaders about half the market is under the control of indigo and they benefited quite a bit from the demise of jet airways what would be your take on interglo particularly as we're now starting to see signs that maybe the dispute is coming to some kind of a healthy conclusion Yeah, so I feel it's a very good, uh, you know, uh, news that the, uh, uh, you know, differences between the promoters is now coming to an end. Uh, it might still take some time, but then I feel that uh, last week also when the stock underwent correction post the sixteen hundred levels it had touched, uh, I feel it was a very good time to accumulate the stock, and uh, it gives us a confidence because, uh, as you rightly mentioned, uh, after the demise of Jet Airways, the clear uh, beneficiary is India. go because even spicejet does not have so many routes so you know open for themselves so uh, i think indigo has been uh, the clear winner in this uh, you know fiasco of airlines and uh, that is why i feel that uh, supported by extremely good set of numbers and i think crude will also settle down at the current levels whatever it is we will not see uh, you know a, a too much a hike in the uh, crude prices and that should augur uh, also augur well for the aviation sector so i think there is a uh, cheer from all the side uh, from the management uh, sorting out their logger heads uh, to you know good numbers increment in the market share Uh, less uh, competitors so i feel everything is good for indigo and that is why one should definitely buy even at current market price all right so that's a buy as far as interglo aviation is concerned we ended a day's high definitely a stock to watch in tomorrow's day of trade nearly 5% higher is where we closed out in today's trading day but we'll take a quick break and on that note on the other side we'll talk about tata motors the company is gearing up to release their first quarter earnings tomorrow we'll also get you a few top bets coming in from forum stay tuned we'll be right back Welcome back. You are watching tomorrow's bets right here on Business Television India. On the earnings front, the big one that we are watching out for is Tata Motors. Just to run through some of the numbers that we are factoring in, it is going to be a hit coming in on the top line. Revenue seen lower by about 13 and a half percent, coming in at about 57,661 crores versus a comparable figure that was over 66,000 in the same quarter last year. We are factoring in a loss as far as the bottom line goes. About 22, uh, 2,224 crores is where we are. factoring it in and that's much lower than the 25 odd 2500 odd that we had in the same quarter last year the net loss expected to come in at about 2021 crores in terms of the factors that we're watching out for the weak performance in both jlr as well as the stand alone business this is what's going to uh, impact the consolidated uh, results the jlr wholesale volumes uh, minus the china jv is expected to come in lower by about 4% and the china joint venture wholesale volumes have come in much lower 34% lower in fact is what uh, uh, is being 
interest in. We're expecting margins to decline sequentially and this on the back of the kind of leverage that we're seeing on the operating front and margin pressure will be partly offset by the favorable currency moves that we have seen in the quarter as well. Uh, we are expecting JLR however to post a 50 to 100 million pound foreign exchange loss. So definitely bad news for JLR but it might help the domestic business. The higher tax rate is expected to be uh, on the back of the improving PBT but worsening pat that we are factoring in. A whole host of key factors to watch out for in terms of uh, you know the retail sales that we've seen for Jaguar as well as the kind of uh, you know volumes that we've seen coming on the Range Rover side of things. And as far as the monthly sales numbers go, things haven't looked strong at all. UK has seen a positive uh, growth number coming in on the retail side for JLR, but the US has seen negative growth coming in in the quarter gone by as well. We will be watching out for their China inventory, compliance of the electric vehicle norms, demand and discounting trends for JLR's key markets as well, as well as the R&D spend outlook and the free cash flow generation. So a lot that we will be watching out for on Tata Motors and Forum. I know, you know, we've discussed how terrible things are looking in the auto space. Tata Motors, though, I have to say, you know, in spite of the kind of fall we've seen in other names, has actually been holding out. You know, even when other stocks were running away and Maruti was making life highs, Tata Motors was stuck in the same range. And even now, it's managed to resist some of the pressure. Perhaps this is because the worst is already priced in for a name like Tata Motors. What are you watching out for from their first quarter numbers and what would be your call on the counter? Yeah, so we also expect the loss to continue on the books and of course we do not see any sort of you know uh, respite coming out from Tata Motors earnings uh, and having said that of course you know when uh, the other auto stocks were up Tata Motors did not participate to the rally then also and uh, likewise now when all are falling you know it is just at those levels but having said that we do not see any sort of cheer in the stock or any positive uh, things coming out you know for the company. So I do not see any uh, concrete reason to go and buy the stock because if we see its main uh, market even the China you know market is not doing good JLR numbers are not coming nice back in the domestic side if we see uh, there is no increment in the volume growth in the passenger vehicles even commercial vehicles uh, aren't doing that good so I think on every parameter it is a miss and uh, there is no respite or there is no uh, turnaround happening you know in terms of any sort of positive news coming coming in for the company. So uh, I think uh, uh, I would continue to stay away from Tata Motors and as far as uh, tomorrow's result is there, yeah the, lo uh, the loss and all the negative news has been discounted but if there are no such positive uh, you know forward looking statements then I think then uh, selling uh, will definitely continue for Tata Motors. All right, so that's as far as Tata Motors is concerned. Now, the other uh, big set of numbers that we are watching out for is Ambuja Cement. A subdued second quarter is what we are factoring in from Ambuja Cement. Profit, sales and volumes are expected to slip this time around. The company, however, is expected to see a 30 basis point margin expansion and this on account of the firm prices that we've seen for the cement sector over the last few months. Let me bring in Piyush Jain then to break it all down for us. Piyush, what should we be watching out for from Ambuja's second quarter? Well, Ambuja Cements again, uh, unlike ACC, which had the benefit of selling uh, heavily in North India, also again got the benefit from South India sales. Ambuja perhaps again will have a distortion here. Again, selling more in Gujarat, Rajasthan had sand issues. Then again, we'll have to sell more in North India. But how many cement companies again can sell uh, really and also take market share in North India? So that perhaps is going to be a wild card for the Ambuja results. If Ambuja was able to dispatch more in North India, more again in the Noida region, more in the Punjab region, then perhaps actually we could see a margin surprise here. Headline numbers are there on your screen. From the point of view, expectations, uh, a subdued quarter expected. Uh, again, uh, sales for, uh, also again from the point of profit growth. Uh, this basically is primarily reflecting that uh, activity on the Gujarat side, Rajasthan side was not again as strong as the pricing activity in extreme North India and also in the South India here. So perhaps this might not be similar fireworks with respect to like again the way ACC has provided. But again for Ambuja, what will really be important here is it will still have benefit again of slightly stable pricing in the North India. Also the West India again basically that was looking much better than Central India. This time also again the Central India is not going to provide it that sort of cushion which again for the last two quarters it has been providing. So the delta is if you sell more in North then again you can outperform. Expectations are slightly on the lower side but ACC has lifted the expectations but at that as we know again it was primarily because of North India here. On the other side uh, on the freight uh, fuel cost side that basically largely has been benign. Uh, on the power cost side again that also again has been supported this quarter. 
So margins perhaps they largely hinge upon again how much volumes Ambuja actually will be able to sell here. So those perhaps uh, will be the key points. On the on the other side, uh, what are we going to expect from the management? Those will be some commentary around how's the demand looking like. There has been miles or two to three percent uh, price cuts in the July month so far. But again, that basically is almost in line with the monsoon season. So again, if the pricing is actually the management's thinking, pricing is going to hold. Is the demand looking as strong as again basically is being expected? And that perhaps the street will like to know here. So as a summary, a subdued quarter, the surprise can only be if Sambuja is able to take market share in North similar to ACC. All right, thanks for that, Piyush. So clearly, we're looking at a subdued quarter. The stock also closed under pressure. It's, it was a cut of nearly a percent coming in. It's not just uh, Tata Motors and Ambuja, though. Earnings season is well and truly underway. Some big ones that we're watching out for on the on the results radar: Bajaj Finance and Bajaj FinServe will be posting numbers. Both these stocks have seen severe cuts recently. What the first quarter uh, you know holds for us will be very crucial to watch for direction going forward. Bank of Baroda and South Indian Bank also from the financial space and Groove Finance that has also been seeing a lot of selling pressure all these names will be reporting numbers biocon from the pharma pack will set to report its first quarter results and tata coffee along with pvr are two more names to watch persistence and systems as well as emphasis from the it pack will also be reporting their numbers but for him i've thrown a lot of stocks and sectors at you over the course of the show leave us with a few names that are on your radar you know i know this is not the right time to be buying heavily uh, but where are you spotting any opportunities if at all which would be your one or two top conviction bets Uh, yeah, so as you rightly said, there is too much of negative sentiments going on here in the markets. So uh, there is we we thought that a bot, uh, you know there would be a bottom nearing soon for the mid caps and the small cap sector. But then again, there is just no respite uh, on the mid caps and the small cap side. So I would say that one should definitely not get into mid cap and small cap sectors right now, uh, since we have uh, have undergone steep correction and the fact that we do not know when would this. Uh, you know correction and because nowhere likely in the near term we see uh, you know uh, correction stopping soon so uh, if one wants to buy and enter in this kind of a market juncture I think one should clearly stick to large cap names and from the large cap only those companies who have reported good set of earnings and have rep uh, said positive commentary for the you know upcoming quarters only those uh, stocks should be bought in uh, this kind of markets so I I think one can definitely go and buy in the insurance space because we have seen that uh, yesterday HDFC Life reported good set of numbers. SBA Life also reported good set of numbers. And the fact that insurance is a newly listed space and it's a very niche and uh, there is no such you know demand elasticity because uh, it is kind of a need now. Uh, so I think insurance would be one space which would clearly benefit uh, even in this kind of markets. So uh, I would say HDFC Life one can definitely buy in, and uh, also you know HDFC AMC results we have seen uh, you know it has come nice on every parameters the growth on the AUM side margins increment on every parameters it has stood tall so HDFC AMC also we can buy at current price of course today HDFC AMC corrected and uh, in the past couple of days it did rally a lot but then I feel that there is uh, a kind of a respite and a confidence that uh, infuses both on the group level and at the uh, you know earnings level so HDFC AMC is also one something we can buy and tomorrow if everything pans out good for Bajaj Finance because we have seen in the press release that AUM uh, uh right, Forum my apologies we are running short of time HDFC Life, HDFC AMC clearly a couple of top picks coming in there from Forum watch the earnings closely uh, that's very clearly uh, you know the, the strategy coming in there from Forum Parit uh, as well so now on that note we will wrap it up on this edition of tomorrow's bets news and updates continue on the other side stay tuned to business television in India. Thank you.